What's up, you guys? Welcome back into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. It is battle from some of your favorite iHeartRadio stations across the country. And, well, I could go the whole cliche of, you know, say his name and he will appear, but I'm pretty sure that he's getting tired of that on every media call he's doing today. So let's just go ahead and say it. Joe Hendry's on the show. Joe, how are you, sir? Hello. Thank you for having me. How many times today has somebody done the whole bit of, like, say his name, man? Or is it hey listen listen i'm building a career on it i'm not gonna start hitting it anytime soon hey you know i i was tempted to do that but i was like do i want to be a fanboy or not so i'm just gonna introduce joe just as joe hendry the man the myth and the legend there we go with that appreciate it so uh let's talk about it slammiversary is upon us coming live from montreal just uh days away tickets are still available by the way tna wrestling.com you can also stream it live on Triller TV, and a lot of people talking about this match. You've qualified for the six-man world championship match. Uh, does this feel like the right time to believe in Joe Hendry and make him the face of the company as the world champion? And would you have a custom design title? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think that's running before you can walk. Let's let's get the title into the Hendry household, and then we can we can think about customizing it. Um. I honestly like I really feel like there is a strong argument that I I'm certainly one of the faces of the company right mm -hmm. now, you know, and I think that there's there's a handful of people who can throw themselves into that hat. And um, that's why we have a this this match that we do at Slammiversary. I think also I think uh, Jordan Grace is certainly in the conversation for the face of the company as well. Uh, and I think that's what's great about TNA is we do have we're just firing on all cylinders right now. We've got multiple faces of the company. Um, I do feel very confident going into this match. I feel like I've got all the momentum, and I think it's what the fans want to see. They want to see me lift the title. Mm -hmm. And I know here on this show, we want to see you win the title because uh, if, you, if you go and ask anybody that's been on this show, when they go on to wrestle for gold, 99.9% .9 of the time, they've gone on to win gold. So you are in very good hands. I'm not inviting anybody else from the match onto the show between now and Slammiversary. Yes. So yes. it's putting out there in the universe for you to become the new TNA champion come Slammiversary. Like it. And like you, it. you talk about uh, multiple faces when it comes to TNA, but there's this, there's this awesome thing, and we got to address the elephant in the room. I mean, the crossover with TNA and WWE, you, Jordan Grace, the Rascals, I mean, how does it feel that you guys are the ones that TNA is entrusting of going over here to the other side? Yeah, I think it's it, it feels amazing. You know, it's I think what's great about it as well is you mentioned obviously myself, Jordan Grace, the Rascals. The really cool thing about it is there's 20 people plus 20 plus people in the TNA locker room who could go and deliver and get the business done and um, to a super high standard. So I think that's what's amazing about our locker room is that you know I'm very uh, feel very good that that I've been one of the ones that's been selected, but we have such a stacked roster that mm -hmm. that could that would have the ability to go in there. And obviously, I hate to hate to put him over, but Frankie Kazarian as well. He did uh, as much as I can't stand him right now. He did a great job. I mean, he did hose you during that battle royal. That wasn't fair. We were all kind of ticked off about that one. But it, you know, it was twenty four on one. Yeah, that was not fair, even though we know you should have won that anyways. Uh, something that's really cool that you see is wrestling is becoming even more popular. It's becoming even more mainstream because beforehand, when we grew up watching wrestling, it wasn't as mainstream it was. But you turn on the TV, boom, there's a I Believe in Joe Hendry sign in the NBA playoffs and the NHL playoffs and all this other stuff. How cool is it for you? Because you've been doing this for a while, the I Believe in Joe Hendry. How cool is it for you to see this taking on its own thing outside of wrestling. Um, yeah, it's it's very cool to see. It's um, I I'm getting a lot of non wrestling fans telling me that they're seeing my stuff and my videos and and things like that. So it feels very good to be able to contribute to um, wrestling and wrestling stuff being seen by more people. It's not a sport that I expected myself to be in this quickly. If you look at it, you know, four months ago. I couldn't get on a pay-per-view and here we are you know so it's just amazing how how things can change you know and i feel very grateful for the spot that i'm in i feel very supported by tna management in the locker room and the fans um it feels awesome 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I got to talk about something that's awesome real quick. I cannot scroll through social media without the caption of going down the Joe Hendry rabbit hole. And it's like everybody's going back to all the parodies of the Foo Fighters and this. And earlier today, I watched a video. I think it was from uh, 2016 where Kurt Angle was giving you your flowers uh, from a match that you had. What's it like seeing all these things pop up and now more and more people are following the Joe Hendry career than what it is just now. So that was always part of the plan. Some of this has been, you know, totally organic, but some of it has been very strategic and very planned. I knew that if I just kept making these entrances and having fun and making great stuff for the audience, that one day it would reach critical mass and catch fire. I didn't think it would be this huge when it did, but I'm very grateful that it has because it's afforded me some amazing opportunities. One of them being the main event of Slammiversary. Um, not only that, fans will have the chance to come and meet us as well at Slammiversary. We've got like this huge autograph fest as well, which is going to be awesome. That's that's the, the 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 night after on Impact. So it'll be very cool to meet people and see what content they've been enjoying there. But as for the rabbit hole, um, yeah, it's very cool to see. It's very cool to see. Absolutely. And of course, uh, you can still grab tickets, TNA wrestling.com. You can watch it live on Triller TV. Now, this is an interesting match because it is a six man world championship match. So Moose doesn't really have to get pinned in order to lose the title. How do you feel heading into this match? I'm not going to ask your strategy because I know Moose and a couple of the other guys in the match watch this show. But how are you feeling heading into this six way dance? Um, so I, I mean, I'm feeling extremely confident. Um, and I'm tell you why I'm feeling confident because nobody has a better, um, nobody has a better win loss record against Moose. Mm-hmm. Um, I have I have beaten Moose when I was digital media champion. I think I beat Moose at least two times in singles matches. But I will say Moose does need to be pinned to lose the championship because it is an elimination match. It's a six way elimination match. So hopefully that I can is- add one more. Yeah, that is true. I mean, it could, he could get pinned first, and then all, all of a sudden you're just like, Moose is now, hey, it's anybody's game for sure. Um, so so you mentioned uh, recently former world champion Eric Young is someone who has helped you develop this character. Um, has he offered any advice on navigating uh, this, this new wave of influx of more people coming to seeing Joe Hendry? He has, actually. He's given me some amazing advice. Um, and I don't, it's one of those things that, you know, obviously there's some things that are behind, uh, in front of the curtain and some things that are in front of the barrier, some things that are behind the barrier. So Eric Young has given me some amazing advice for navigating, you know, the, the, uh, a rise like this politically. So I, I really appreciate that because, because EY has done it all. He's been there. He knows what it's like to ascend, um, in a company. So he's been amazing. He's one of the, he's one of the guys that I go to and I trust a hundred percent. Um, EY does not get enough credit for his contributions to not just TNA but to professional wrestling. I owe a lot to that guy. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very grateful for everything, all the inf- all the info he's given me, and um, yeah, um, he's someone that I'm I'm very uh, grateful to call a friend as well. Absolutely, EY is is one of the the nicest people the ever that I've met in this industry, um, and you know. A lot has happened this year for TNA, and we're, what, seven months in? Um, What has the backstage energy been like for all these massive changes that have occurred for TNA literally over the last seven months? Um, I think that we've got a very happy and a very united um, locker room. You know, I think we all understand that we believe we are putting out um, a tremendous professional wrestling product. Um, We're very proud of it. We're very excited. Um, right now we're selling it everywhere we go sold out in uh, we had we had a show that was sold out in chicago a show that was sold out in philadelphia and you know we, we've already passed three thousand tickets pre-sale for for one night in montreal so you know this this is going to be the biggest show that tna's had in a very long time um it's it's a very exciting time oh, it absolutely is i mean you, you look at it and wrestling is everywhere especially when it comes to the tna brand and you know we're again seven months in. It seems like right now the big breakout star for TNA is one Joe Hendry. But I want to ask Joe Hendry who he thinks the next big breakout in TNA, uh, that m- star that maybe not a lot of people are talking about. Um, 
I wouldn't say there's not many people who are talking about them. It's just who I think would be the next breakout star. Um, I think would be Jake something. Mm-hmm. I think that Jake something is one of the most underrated wrestlers in the world. Um, I, I had probably my best ever TNA match with him uh, as possible. Um, the other the other week there, uh, I think that he could be. I think he could be a champion in any company. I think that Jake something is is someone who is going to ascend. Absolutely. We've had him on the show before and uh, we, we are right there with you when it comes to Jake something, he will be a champion one day. And uh, just like you will be a champion. Cause we'll put it out in the universe at slam aversion. It's coming up here That's on July 20th, which tickets still available, but not very many because like Joe said, it's been selling pretty quickly. TNA wrestling.com. If you can't make it to Canada, well, you can watch it live on Triller TV. Before we let you go, um, where can people keep up with you online? Any fa- uh, final thoughts heading into Slammiversary? <laughs> and do I have any final thoughts? Um, I I believe that I'm, I'm the guy. I think I'm the guy that is going to step up. And I genuinely believe that I'm ready to do this for TNA. And I think the fans feel it. And it's time. It's time.